I'd posted in my um, group yesterday um, asking people to let me know what they're struggling with. And one of the common themes throughout the thread was um, people being anxious about getting back in the saddle after having some time off over the winter. And, you know, people have time off from riding for different reasons. Winter is a big one with footing and uh, temperatures not conducive to riding if you live in the northern hemisphere at this time of year, or rain and mud in other parts of the world. Or it might just have been that you've had time off because of an injury or just other things going on in your life. Um, whatever it is, you've been looking forward to these wonderful spring days that are ahead of us or the good weather that's ahead of us or just getting back to riding because whatever's been stopping you is getting out of the way. But the closer that day comes to when you're, you know you're going to be able to ride, the more anxious you start to feel. The anxiety replaces the excitement. So if this is your first time joining me, I'm Ann Gage, the horse riding confidence coach, and I help anxious horse riders get back in the saddle with confidence so they can enjoy every ride. And this is my book, Confident Rider, Confident Horse. It's available on my website, confidenthorsemanship.com. So I'm going to share with you some of my top tips for how I help anxious riders get their confidence back and get their excitement back about riding and looking forward to those rides out, especially uh, hacking is a big one, going out on the trails right now. Um, so and the, these are some of the things I help my my one-to-one -one clients with. So And I've used them myself, so I know they absolutely work. So the big issue is as long as you know that you're horse is ready to do the work he needs to do and now is a great time to be doing those groundwork exercises maybe even taking your horse out for some walks just on a lead rope to get him comfortable again with being out of his paddock and away from his buddies um, you know taking your horse for a little hike and gradually extending uh, or expanding the distance from where he feels safe and familiar and comfortable uh, gradually expanding that distance so he's not getting all stressed out about leaving his buddies because of course if he hasn't been out for a while he's going to be feeling a similar way to your feeling you know his comfort zone his bubble has gotten smaller over this time off so that's a great way to reestablish your connection with your horse to get yourself both fit by doing that groundwork so that's that's the first thing um the next thing is, especially if you've had some time off, is to check things like your horse's saddle fit. His muscles will have changed if he has had some time off. So don't assume that just because the saddle fit him last summer, it's still going to fit well right now. Just check that out. You may need to, you know, if the muscles have deteriorated a bit with his time off, perhaps um, just putting in a an extra saddle pad or something like that will help until he builds the muscles up but you know there's lots of resources to check online for making sure that your saddle is fitting correctly or if it's been a while since you've had had your saddle checked then um, get a good saddle fitter to come out and and just check it for you it's really worth that investment um, to prevent your horse being sore, which can then, of course, cause those behavioral issues that none of us want to be dealing with. Uh, the other thing, of course, is check your horse's back. Um, you know, maybe have a little massage, hire a massage therapist or a chiropractor just to give him a, a check over and get his teeth checked if they haven't been checked in a while because you may not notice that there's an issue with his teeth until he has a bit in his mouth if you if you ride with a bit um, so it's good anyway to have your horse's teeth checked every six months and at minimum every year need some tea to get me through <coughs> excuse me so um, I see a bunch of you are, are popping in and joining me and please do say hello in the comments. I'm trying to not get distracted by them. I will come back to them um, towards the end of this. But if you have any questions or thoughts as I'm going through this, then please just pop them in the comments and I will address them before I sign off. Um, 
So, so we've talked about, you know, doing those things like the, the groundwork, just to get your horse fitted up. To, it's a great way if you go for walks with him to get your, your own fitness level back. Check saddle fit, check teeth, you know, make your horse sure your horse is physically ready for the exercise um, and uh, before you're getting on his back. And it's a great way for you to assess how your horse is feeling. Are there any issues that you need to address that something you need to work on either for your with your by yourself with your horse or do you need to maybe get a trainer in to help you? Um, so that's the first thing because that really helps you when you can look at your horse and say, okay, I know you're okay with what we're going to do. Now I just have to get me okay with what we're going to do, right? And that comes down to your mindset. If you know you've got the skill to do it, and you know your horse has got the ability to, to, to do it, to go out on that trail ride, just using that one as an example, it could be going to horse shows or whatever you're looking forward to doing over the next few months. So you're working on your skills, your technical skills, you're working on your horse's skills and ability and fitness and those types of things. The next thing is your mindset. And this is where a lot of the anxieties come from because as was coming up in my group discussion, you know, you've had a bad experience, say, um, and it might have only happened once and that can be enough to damage your confidence. It might have happened multiple times, but whatever it is, that bad experience, now your brain has taken hold of it and it forms a pattern. Our brain works with patterns. So we see, and it, it looks for things that are familiar and things that support the beliefs we have. So when we have a bad experience, our brain goes, oops, we better pay attention to that because we don't want to have that happen again. And then it starts to set off a little alarm every time it thinks you might potentially be doing that thing again that got you into trouble, um, that your brain deems now as being a dangerous activity. So what we need to do is help your brain process that, get the lessons from it, the learnings from it that it needs so that it is assured that you are not putting yourself in danger just by getting on your horse and going for a hack or getting out on the trails. And there are different techniques I use when I'm working with my clients and I, that I teach in my courses and, and online classes that kind of flip a switch in your brain. So you do get the lessons that you want that you need so you can move forward, but you're not feeling anxious all the time. And that anxiety I'm talking about is like when a, a smoke detector or a car alarm that has a real purpose to say, hey, danger, danger, pay attention. When something is wrong with one of those and it gets triggered, um, you know, when you put your kettle on and your smoke detector goes off or you're making your morning toast and your smoke detector goes off, that's inappropriate. Um, and the same with a car alarm that goes off just because somebody, you know, brushes by it. You know, we want it just to go off and tell us when there's really something we need to worry about. And that's the same with our fear mechanism. Because honestly, there are times when we're riding when we do need to go, oh, this is a dangerous situation. Or I need to be taking steps to, to de-escalate this situation. That's the kind of warning. That's the kind of um, nervousness or anxiety that we, well, not anxiety, that's the wrong word, but just that little, mm, there's something not right here that we need to pay attention to and knowing the difference between those two. So how do we reset that alarm? And one of the most powerful ways is through visualization. And there are different ways to do this, but basic visualization that you do when you're feeling calm. So you have to sort of set aside time to do this. Do it when you're first waking up in the morning, do it before you go to bed at night, do it at sometime during the day, and just recall a time when you had, if it's to do with trail riding or hacking, the best trail ride or hack you ever had. 
or if it's to do with competing or going to a horse show, the best feeling you ever had at a horse show. You want to bring up those really positive best feelings you've had. And just um, blow those images up in your mind as much as you can. Now, not everybody sees a picture. I don't, I'm, I'm not great at, at seeing mental pictures in my head. But you can get a sense of what that time was like. And you can feel it in your body and you can bring those emotions back up and you replay that over and over and over. And what that does is tell your brain how much you enjoy doing that activity. What typically happens for us because we have this negativity bias built into our brains is that we have a bad experience and that's the one we focus on. That's the one we recall like that. That's the one we replay over and over and over again. Um, and then we, that affects our emotions. And so we become anxious, we become nervous, we become scared. And it's our emotions that are controlling our thoughts. So then we get into that, all of that what if thinking because I'm feeling nervous, all my what if thinking is gonna be of negative outcomes. So when you change that around and you, you practice when you're feeling calm, bringing up that memory of that best ride you ever had, that best trail ride, that best time at a horse show, whatever it is for you, and you really bring up those emotions. Now those emotions, those positive emotions of excitement, of um, joy, are going to impact your thinking. So then you get into more positive ways of thinking. So the what ifs can still happen, but it's going to be what if we have this wonderful experience rather than what if we have this disaster. Okay, so you can play with that right now. If you just take a moment and if you go, let's go into the, the negative feeling a little bit, just to give you an experience of this, if you recall a time when you were feeling a little bit anxious while you were riding or a ride where you felt a little bit anxious. And I just want you to sort of zero in on a particular moment in that ride. And just closing your eyes can help with this. And just get a little sense of that anxiety. And you probably feel it in your body. And as you get that, now I want you just to do something a little bit more fun and bring yourself out of that experience so that it's if you're over here and you come out of your body and you're now over here you can be above or beside wherever you're most comfortable being and watch that watch yourself in that experience just watch yourself and you may have noticed as you brought yourself out of that experience so that you're now watching yourself that that anxiety level started to go down and you're feeling more calm and so just watching yourself in that situation, what do you notice about your body language, about your facial expression, about what's happening around you? Just notice lots of things about that situation. And then when you've done that, just notice something that you might not have noticed before about that situation. something you might not have noticed before about yourself in that situation. And when you've done that, what I'd like you to do is notice how you would have liked to have reacted in that situation. How you would have liked to have been how you would have liked to have felt in that situation. Maybe it would be more calm, more confident, more focused, more determined, just whatever comes up for you. Just notice that. And when you've got a sense of that, now watch that Watch yourself again in that experience. Be watching yourself in that experience again 
as you're reacting the way you would have liked to have reacted, as you're responding the way you would have liked to have responded, as you're feeling the way you would have liked to have felt. And notice your body language, your facial expressions, what's going on around you, and how you feel. That's great. And now, if you'd like to, you can bring yourself back down into that experience so that now you're actually doing it as you're feeling that those positive emotions, that calm confidence, um, that connection with your horse, perhaps, all that good stuff. Take that with you as you go back into your body in that experience and enjoy that experience. Now, you can stay there as long as you like and really soak up what you've learned and soak up those positive experiences. And when you're ready, just come back to the room. And if you're with me live, just pop in the comments if you'd like to share what you noticed. Did you notice a change in how you felt about that experience? About the possibilities of how much fun you could have in a future experience? What we want to do, what that little exercise shows you is the power of visualization, the power of your mental imagery, and the power of your emotions, and that you're able to change your emotions. You're able to change how you're feeling by changing what's going on in your mind. That's what mindset does. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me on this live stream. I hope um, you have gotten something out of it, go away and try these techniques. If you need any other help, you'd like to uh, talk to me about my one-to-one -one coaching, you can send me a message. I'm happy to um, have a quick chat call with you to tell you more about it, to find out what you're struggling with, to find out if it's a good fit. And I have other resources available that can help you out as well. So thanks again for joining me and I will see you on my next live. Bye for now.